Well, hello, everybody, and welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today for our second presentation of our four-part series that's focusing on email success campaign strategies for travel professionals. And I'm Joni Ogg, and Tom Ogg will be joining us at the end of the presentation to take some questions if you have any. And before we get started, um, just remember that you're all muted, but we welcome your questions. And you can type in your questions at any time in the question area on the right-hand panel of the screen. And we'll get to those questions um, at the end and take as many as we're able to take for today. So first of all, um, this webinar is about email subject line best practices. And having a robust and engaging subject line is absolutely critical to your email open rate. And we see it all the time because we send emails every day on behalf of clients that want to reach you, the travel professionals. And some seem like doomed from the start and others experience tremendous success. There's a lot that goes into a successful email campaign and the subject line is the first of the most important factors. Now, in the last one, we discussed the importance of having a professional email address for email campaigns. Uh, my name at mycompany.com is a format that works very well for email campaigns. And avoid, always try to avoid, if you can, generic terms such as sales at or promotions at, admin at, info at, in favor of identifying the person actually sending the email. This also offers some level of personalization. So before we get into the best practices, we need a basic understanding of the reality of digital marketing in 2019. We like to call it the Facebook effect. And while a few years ago, one might have opened an email and read it all the way through if they were interested, today, because of the speed that we absorb information, no longer do digital marketers have the luxury of an expansive palette on which to paint their messages. And the best example of this is watching YouTube.com video advertisements. Video advertising on YouTube.com can be extremely effective or not so much depending on how the advertiser understands the reality in which their ad is appearing. Kind of drives me nuts when you see an ad come on and makes no point or even identifies themselves before the five seconds occurs when one can skip the rest of the ad. An ad on YouTube has only five seconds to engage the viewer and get them to click. And since one only pays YouTube if someone either clicks on the ad or watches it for 20 seconds, not making your point during that first five seconds is downright incompetent. One has to apply this logic as well to their email campaign. Now, email subject lines live in the same reality. And here are the challenges that we face. Each person in business receives an average of 121 emails per day. And between 60 to 70% of all email is viewed on a mobile device. Almost 50% of all email is considered spam. And email recipients delete as much as 65% of messages based on the subject line. The mobile click to open rate for US marketing email is 13.7%. And the desktop click to open rate for US marketing email is 18%. 33% of mobile users say they've read an email based on its subject line. And 35% of recipients open email based solely on the subject line. The iPhone is the most popular mobile device for email opens. 65% report email as spam based on the subject line. 43% report email as spam based on the from name or email address. So it's quite easy to see the challenge when engaging in an email marketing campaign. It's a lot of competition in a person's inbox and the challenge is to entice the person to open your email and read the message. A solid subject line message should accomplish this task. So creating compelling subject lines is the first challenge that an email marketer faces. And while subject lines with between 61 to 70 characters are the most opened and read, 
followed by those with 51 to 60 and then 91 to 100. Most smartphones only display 28 to 32 characters of the subject line. This is exactly like the YouTube video ad that doesn't make its point within the first five seconds of the video. You should make a valid point during the first 28 to 32 characters. And by not optimizing these first characters, you'll never obtain high click-through rates or CTRs. Now here's an example of marketing an ebook on digital marketing for travel suppliers. Note that this is just representative of what could be an email for anything. What someone on a smartphone sees. Travel e-marketing fails. Why? This is what someone on a desktop, notebook, or tablet sees. Travel e-marketing fails. Why? Question mark. Why are travel suppliers email campaigns failing? Question mark. If the first 28 to 32 characters were not optimized for mobile devices, this is what they would probably see. Why are travel suppliers email CA? You can easily see that the mobile version is going to stimulate clicks when optimized and not so much when not optimized. And while good subject line writing is a challenge for some, but not for others, there are specific genres of subject lines that seem to garner more clicks. The trick is to understand the action that you want the reader to take. In the case of the above example, one may want the reader to click to a landing page where they can download a free ebook on digital marketing. Another objective might be to get the reader to click on a link to a blog post or website. Understanding what your specific objective is for the email is the key to building your subject line. And the subject line of your email must be consistent with the action that you want the reader to take once he or she opens it and starts reading the content of the email. And the subject line should be the hook that engages the reader to take action. Now, then the body of the email is the romance that encourages one more click to take action. And like all romances, the process should be enjoyable and non-invasive. Shouting your UVP should motivate the right potential client to click. Now here are types of subject lines that do get clicks. Questions promote curiosity and the desire to know the answer. A well-crafted question can motivate readers to seek the answer. The questions in your subject line should compel the reader to take further action by opening the email to find the answer to the question. And depending on your objective, they may have to click on another link to arrive at the final answer. Using questions to engage a person's curiosity is an excellent way to build subject lines. Scarcity. Scarcity really plays on readers' fear of loss. Boy, the airlines really understand this tactic. How many times have you seen the message, only one left, when booking flights or sale ends tomorrow? Of course, when you return a couple weeks later, they're still in short supply. You can use this tactic for your subject lines by announcing just a few left or book by a certain date, implying that the offer will not be available after that date. Using the word tomorrow is a powerful motivator to take action immediately so the opportunity is not lost. Playing on people's fear of loss is a powerful motivator for clicks. And offering potential clients free offers is a great way of introducing yourself and your services. If you specialize in selling everything Disney, why not create a free ebook on how to make the most of your time at Disneyland and California Adventure Park? You can easily craft some excellent subject lines like Disney Park Fanatics Get More. Find out how families get more Disney while paying less. Consider offering free gifts or product seminars. Now, exclusiveness is another great motivator. If you're marketing to existing clients, make your offerings exclusive by giving them the first opportunity to book before being offered to the general public. Don't send a flyer. Send a personal invitation as one of your best and most valuable clients. Having an exclusive list is the best way to guarantee your subject line's work. Don't just do cruise groups. Make them founders or owners or president's events. 
Travel offers numerous opportunities to use humor in subject lines, and depending on your niche, they can be both humorous and informative. Like when the flight attendant said, dot, dot, dot. Now, Tom had another little uh, note in here when we were making this about a a blonde joke. And so um, he doesn't know it, but I deleted that from this PowerPoint. I thought you guys would appreciate that if you're blonde, ladies. Now, here's how to improve email effectiveness on smartphones. Optimize the pre-header text. The pre-header text follows the sender's name and the subject line in an email and is generally displayed on most smartphones and mobile devices. Now, while users can modify their pre-header or preview settings, most users see the one line of text. By optimizing the first line of text in your email, you can add validity as to why they should click to open. Optimize above the fold. When folks click to open your email on a smartphone, make sure that your call to action appears on the opening screen. The minimum size for your call to action should be 50 by 50 pixels. If they're interested, they will scroll down to read the specific value proposition and then return to the call to action to continue. By including a second call to action at the end of the presentation, you make it that much easier for them to take some action. And use bullet points and text. Whenever possible, make your points as concisely as possible. Bullet points are exceptionally effective at conveying information. Avoid long paragraphs in favor of short ones. And remember that the screen the reader is using is small. And by making your message easy to read and understand, you're going to gain more click-throughs. Forget the pictures. Many smartphones will not show pictures in email by default, and most pictures take up too much real estate for a mobile device. If you do include a picture, make sure it's optimized at 72 DPI and sized properly for a mobile device. Nothing's going to cause a reader to trash your email faster than starting, staring excuse me, at a blank screen waiting for a picture to load. And minimalistic is really best. Nothing turns readers off faster than clicking on an email only to find wall-to-wall -wall text. Take a lesson from Uber's successful marketers like Google and Apple. Once you've written your email, try to see just how many words you can eliminate while still keeping the message strong. Take that space and turn it into white space or background color if you're using color. The easier that your email is to read, the more people will read it. So as you can see, a mounting an effective email campaign requires quite a bit of thought to achieve a positive execution. So let's go over the key points that we've talked about today. There are numerous challenges for an email campaign. A compelling subject line is critical to email success. Questions, scarcity, free offers, exclusiveness, and humor motivate. And email subject lines and format need to be optimized for mobile devices. Okay, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this information. We're going to open up the webinar now for some of your questions. Just give me a second to get that prepared. Um, Tom is going to join us. Um, he's our expert guest, and he's going to answer questions for us today. Um, remember, you're, just go ahead and keyboard your questions into the questions area on the panel you see on your screen, and we'll get to as many as we can. Uh, welcome, Tom. We've got some questions for you to get started. Great. Welcome from Punta Mita, Mexico. Uh, I understand it's rainy and cold up here. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Yes, actually, everybody that's on here, it snowed in San Diego yesterday. We had snow at our house last night in uh, Southern California, and it was pretty fun. I was like a little kid looking out the window. I loved it. It was so cool. So um, anyway, so as to get back to the questions, but it was really fun. So I'm going to just see what we've got here. Someone had a question about the first webinar we did. Great question. Um, we did do a first in the series, and we did record that, and that should be on um, a couple different places. It'll be on travelprofessionalnews.com. It will also be on our YouTube channel, which I believe is called Tom Og. Is that correct, Tom? That is. That is correct. Any place else that we it's have, also, I can't remember where else it is. 
Yes, I put it in the community as well, in the video section of the community. Okay, so it's in the travel professional community as well then. So Paula, you should be able to review that last one when you have time. Uh, let me just see where other questions we met. Give me one sec. Ah. Tom, do you have anything that you want to share while I'm getting these together? I would love to get feedback on these uh, mini webinars uh, in, in, uh, instead of doing the chats. Uh, so if anybody is listening and has an opinion one way or the other, we'd love to hear from you about them. Because uh, we, we intend on doing these as often as possible. Uh, the intent is to give you rock solid information uh, to help your marketing and operations uh, in a short period of time uh, and without a bunch of um, other stuff attached to it. That's right. Let's put it that way. There's no advertising or it's just solid information to help. Yeah, if you all, if you have any comments about it, you know, if you write those in to the questions area, um, I'll actually be able to see that later on when I do the report for this. So we won't mention them here, but um, if you put them in, I will be able to see them later and I can share those with Tom. So that's kind of cool if you if you wouldn't mind doing that. Um, I do have a couple other questions, though, that I'd like to take a look at here. Um, what would be a good subject line for a follow up to a trade or a wedding show? Great question. You would have to have uh, a reason to reach out. As an example, if you took a picture at the trade or at the wedding show of the couple, uh, your you know a subject line like your picture came out great, you know, and then uh, you know telling them how to get it. Uh, but you would need to have a specific objective. Uh, and then build the subject line around that objective, uh, requiring them to take action to get whatever you're offering them. Okay. Um, we have another question that's, uh, is it possible to share or show a few effective and successful emails so that we can see for ourselves what they look like on desktop and mobile devices? Um, I don't think we can do that here right now um, because we're in two different locations. I'm not sure Tom's going to be able to do that. I'm not sure he's logged into the software because I believe he's calling from the phone. Do you have anything you want to yeah. share on that, Tom? I don't think you're going to be able to do that right now. We can, yeah, I think that that uh, came up last uh, last on the last webinar. And we'll go ahead and, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll do it while I'm down here. Okay. I'll go ahead and prepare a mock, a mock email campaign with uh, with the uh, uh, email itself, uh, the landing page, and the uh, product being offered. So you can see exactly how it works uh, to engage people. Where will you put that? I'll stick it in the community because uh, this is actually being offered to people in the community. Uh, so uh, uh, that would be the best place to put it, I would think. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, and I have another question, a great, another great question. What is your feeling about mailing out to a mailing list that is sorted by your zip code or other demographics? You've got the Can Spam Act. And unless, unless the people join that list uh, voluntarily to receive emails, to have their email address sold uh, and to receive emails, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. Uh, anybody that receives an email that's clearly spam, and no matter how you word it, uh, it's it's going to be viewed as spam by the receiver. So I, that can sometimes do more damage than uh, uh, than be beneficial. You're much better off if, if you have that kind of an email list, uh, you should send them an email with, with your value proposition, asking for their permission to join your list where you can then provide them with uh, with information. Okay. Um, so are you saying that using an AOL email address is not acceptable? I would, no. no, don't use your AOL email, in, uh, email address in a, uh, in, a, in a formal email campaign. It just simply isn't professional. Okay. Uh, you need to have 
you know, it's like a hot mill. Uh, I think in the, you know, in the last uh, webinar, we used two email addresses. One was uh, hotbeerbuddies47 at hotmail.com, which clearly would, uh, you know, people would reject opening that email. Or, you know, you know your name at rivercruisespecialist.com. I mean, it, you, you can see the difference. And many, as we go back and look at the stats, a lot of people will eliminate or delete emails based on the from address. Okay. Um, are there any email marketing companies that you recommend that are affordable for a small home-based agent? I think all of them are pretty affordable now. Constant Contact, uh, MailChimp. There's a bunch of them out there. If you just Google email marketing companies, so, I mean, there's there's dozens and dozens of them, and they all have special offers. And, and generally, for a small list, it's not very expensive. But you need these companies simply because they can do uh, HTML, email, video. You know, it, 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 the state of art for email campaigns is so good uh, that, uh, you know, it, it's well worth the money, the investment to keep them. Okay. Um, are there ways to determine how many of your emails are opened? Absolutely. With any email marketing company, it'll give you exactly how many are opened, uh, what your click-through rate is, uh, you know, who opened them, what regions opened them. I mean, there's the, the information, the data that is divided by these companies is, is uh, staggering and it'll really help you be successful with it. Okay. So, um, to follow up to the question previous, um, she's saying, but are there people that you recommend that will edit the email and help create it? I'm not sure about that. I don't think I would, I don't think I know anybody that, I don't would, either. Uh, that I could recommend that does that. Okay. Yeah, I can't think of anything on that either. I'm going to see if we've got any other ones that we can take. We've got a lot of comments about this, by the way, and people like the webinar format. So thank you guys for chiming in here. That, that helps to make us know that we're doing a good job here. Thank you. And I hope we're offering you something of value. Um, you have. I've got one more question, and I think that's probably it for today. Um, are there any words that you um, suggest are avoided in a subject line? All you have to do is uh, is uh, Google email subject line uh, trigger words. Yeah, and there's there's five hundred to a thousand of them that that uh, uh, that you should use in a subject line. I mean, it, a lot of uh, uh, email clients will immediately mark put them in spam that those words appear. Uh, and again, you, you know, it's all about the unique value proposition of the email campaign, and that's what the subject line should focus on. Uh, okay. Never use word like free is one that you yeah. know, never you never want to use. Yeah, absolutely. I, we have a number. There's a number of them. And I, that's a great idea, just to Google and then stick a, try to stay away from those kind of words. All right. Well, I think that probably pretty much takes care of it because I know we want to keep these short and sweet for everybody. Um, and if I if you've sent any questions in that we didn't get to, um, I'll try to pass those on to Tom so that he can, um, you know, respond to you if he's able to, to do that because I have your email addresses here. So I'll, I'll definitely get those off to him if there's any other questions that, that we might be able to answer for you if one of us can help you. Anyways, um, I hope you enjoyed today. I really appreciate all of you being here um, with us and be watching for the notification of the next event um, that we're going to do on the hot on these particular email this email marketing campaign, we are kind of just going to pick days when we don't have other webinars for other clients and such that we're doing on Tuesdays. So uh, just stay watching your hot topics. That's where we're going to be sending notification out, and then also I will be sending emails out to everybody who did register for this event, so you'll know when the next one is coming. So thank you everybody for being here today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye. Thank you very much.